Recently on this channel, we discussed the shape of the Earth in our ongoing series, Are You Flummoxed? Which, by the way, you can watch right now. I know, isn't the internet amazing? Anyway, I made a promise to a commenter stating I would do a much more scientifically in-depth video on the shape of the Earth. And I am a man of my word. So in this video, we're going to explain using a mixture of science, documentaries, papers, and flat Earth is proving themselves wrong, that the Earth is actually round, and why the belief that the Earth is flat is just wrong. Stupid fucking cunt. Um, but the Earth looks like this. Mm. But you can forget about that because the Earth, in fact, well done, that's the core, yeah. uh, looks like this. Part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat Earth system we live in. The first rule of Flat Club is you don't talk about Flat Club. 64 year old Mad Mike Hughes was known as a homemade astronaut on a self financed mission to space. This campaign to uh, prove or disprove the Earth is flat. He wants to launch satellites. Weather balloons, drones. Let's begin with some basic knowledge we can find with a simple Google search. We shall Google a phrase, flat earth, and we shall see what we find. The first thing we can take note of is the Wikipedia definition. The flat earth model is an archaic and scientifically disproven conception of earth's shape as a plane or disc. Now I know schools tell us Wikipedia isn't the most trustworthy of sources, so we shall quickly move on. The next article of note I found discusses a popular flat earth model created by Bruce Shearwood after reading an article by Lee McIntyre. We'll get back to both of those folks. He was featured in a guest editorial in the September 2019 issue of AGP, asking for allies in pushing back against the flat earthers who accuse all scientists of conspiring with all governments to hide the truth that the earth is flat. What? No, I, I know you're thinking as I was thinking. What proof is there that the government's hiding a flat earth from us? Well, our team looked into it and we couldn't find anything. Googling the phrase the government is hiding the earth is flat only returned us back to the articles debunking the flat earth theory. Returning to the article, it gives us a link to the flat earth model in question, which is a little bit poorly optimised, I understand, from research that the guy's old. But Jesus man, just get someone else to do it if you can't optimise a website. And the model doesn't make much sense. For example, the path of the sun doesn't exactly track with the real world observations we have. If the sun were to move like this, then our day and night cycles wouldn't do the things they do. Furthermore, the maps they use to show the Earth don't exactly track either. Take this map for example. It just seems a little bit off, right? Well, for starters, the massive ocean of water is completely disproportionate to the actual size of oceans on the scale maps we already have. Then we have the massive gap between Australia and its actual neighbours. Also, poor Australia has been compressed beyond belief. Also. Why is there no scale? If you don't have a scale on your map, how do you actually use it? Google Maps have a scale and nobody in the world, from what I know at least, is using Google Maps for its scale. If I can find the distance between Paris and Berlin using just Google Maps' scale, then that's a trustworthy map. I can't do it with your map because there's no such scale. It's almost as if the map doesn't make any sense, and the mental gymnastics required to even guess a distance isn't worth it. Whilst I am a physics student and I of course eat mental gymnastics for breakfast, even I am not willing to go through that level of pain and torture. Finally, just to end this section, here are some GCSE book examples which pretty much kill your theory stone dead. Starters, atmospheric pressure. From what we could find during our research, you don't have much on this topic apart from something we're going to get into later, trust me. However, this GCSE book here, which was very kindly supplied by Dogs Dogs, thank you Dogs Dogs, can clearly and concisely explain atmosphere and pressure and atmospheric pressure. 
Would you look at that? But you can't. And the list goes on and on. Gravity, tectonic plates, magnetism, the things go on and on and on. And it's almost as if a GCSE book can explain it because it's true, and you can't explain it because you can't bullshit your way out of it. Interesting, isn't it? Now let's just move on to the more complex evidence that proved the Earth is round. Something I didn't actually ever think I'd say in 2022. Now for the advanced evidence. This stuff we had to do a bit of digging for. This is not because the evidence is hard to find, trust me. It's very easy to find. More because we didn't want to present evidence we knew they could bullshit their way out of. Don't worry, we found a paper in the end with everything we needed to explain why they believe it and also why it's wrong. Also, this took multiple hours to break down alone, outside of script writing. So if there was any time to subscribe, it would be right now. Please subscribe. I am begging you. Now that you've subscribed, let's begin the breakdown in more ways than one. The article is entitled Fighting Flat Earth Theory and is penned by Rachel Brazil from physicsworld.com as a featured article. Brazil starts off by shocking me to my very core by explaining that my favourite rapper of all time, not really, it's Andy Sandberg, B.O.B. is a flat earther. In 2017, he fundraised to launch a satellite to prove that the Earth is flat. He needed 200,000 US dollars for this, which he later up to a million for some reason, and requested this on a GoFundMe page, the leading website to help Americans without insurance. B.O.B. did not get anywhere near this amount, so it's safe to say the adventures of B.O.B. began and ended on Earth. Anyone gets that, you get a cookie. Brazil comments on how this seems like a joke or a stunt, however, does note that people subscribing to this theory has been rising at a very alarming rate. There's even an annual conference for the Flat Earth community in the US and was attended in 2019 by more than 600 people! That's like a whole school's worth of people, man! I'm gonna cry. It doesn't seem like a lot though. In the big picture, does it? Seven billion people on the planet, so on and so on. However, the internet has shown us that they're a very passionate group of people and their numbers do stand a lot more than 600. I had one in the comments. She also comments on YouTube being full of videos talking about the theory being true, which we'll, we will return to, do not worry. Put that in your diary. We then see a familiar name, Lee McIntyre, love that guy. He's a very vocal critic of the Flat Earth community. He's a philosopher from Boston University. Now, philosophers are usually a pain in the fucking arse, questioning life and making people sad. But Lee McIntyre is a philosopher I would drink with because he fucks with Flat Earthers on a weekly basis. McIntyre wrote a book entitled Respecting Truth, Willful Ignorance in the Internet Age which, by the way, is a brilliant read. I bought it just for writing this script. We see McIntyre pop up throughout this piece, so remember him. And respect him. That man braved the Flat Earth Conference for us, so put some damn respect on his name! Ashley Lardrum, another friendly face and a psychologist from Texas Tech University, believes that they are deadly serious about this, as she quotes... If they were trolling, they are very good actors. We've talked to more than 90 members of the Flat Earth community and they're all very sincere in their beliefs. Lectures at the Denver event including talking to your family and friends about Flat Earth, NASA and other space lies and 14 plus ways the Bible says Flat Earth. Firstly, if you're attending any of these lectures, stay away from me. Secondly, the lecture NASA and other space lies is absolutely ridiculous. NASA isn't a lie. They're real. I checked. Do you see that at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, that's a source. Go go read it. They're real people. Thirdly, 14 plus ways the Bible says flat earth shouldn't be a lecture. The Bible is just thirsty gay fanfic written by a bunch of sexually repressed wankers because their friends didn't want to fuck. Am I the only one who gets that? I mean, I asked the people in Discord, go to Discord, join the server. They agreed, but outside of that, does anyone else think that the Bible is just sort of saucy gay fanfic? Which I do. Let's get back on topic, however. Brazil goes on to give the perfect line of questioning for us. How exactly should we respond? 
This is a brilliant way to tackle it because, as we will see, flat earthers aren't exactly the people who respond well to science. Now we are given a brief history of the shape of the Earth. We knew that the Earth was a sphere in 300 BC-ish, as the Greek philosophers had some serious brains and Aristotle seriously hot. Itosephon, he gets a high five, and an apology for not being able to pronounce his name. He calculated the circumference of the Earth during this time, and in the 9th century, Islamic scholars made more advanced measurements of the Earth, just to really ensure we had it right, which we did, of course we did. We were clever fuckers. In the 16th century, we circled the Earth. If we had an ice wall, we couldn't do that, could we? You know, it doesn't make sense. Does it? I've been awake for 44 hours now, I, I'm struggling to tell what's real and what's fake. Just to put the cherry on the cake, however, back to topic, we have hundreds of documented images of the Earth from space. However, remember, these people don't take science and proof into consideration very often. Brazil believes that the modern flat Earth movement has come from a mistrust and backlash to scientific progress and the wish to return to biblical literalism perhaps being the biggest contender. We then return to a major villain, Samuel Robotham. Damn you, Samuel! He proposes that the Earth is a flat, immovable disk centred on the North Pole, with Antarctica being replaced by the infamous Ice Wall. This leads us to 1965, where the International Flat Earth Society was created by Samuel Shelton. There's another Samuel! Will this torture ever end? The society was founded in Dover of all places, and was initially regarded as just British eccentricity, which, as we all know, is nothing of harm, and definitely won't ruin our lives day to day. <laughs> Brexit! <coughs> Partygate! Oh, Boris fucking Johnson! In the 2000s, the theory picked back up thanks to the internet, with the idea gaining traction in the US. The Flat Air Society was relaunched due to an increase in popularity in 2009, and the annual shit vest known as Flat Earth Conference also began in earnest, ruining my life forever. As with any theory, there are many disagreements about the Flat Earth and many models that exist. Brazil tells us that some models propose that the Earth's edges are surrounded by an ice wall that they love so much, others propose that our Flat Earth and atmosphere are enclosed in a snow globe-like dome where nothing can fall off. <laughs> it's so painful. The most recent US model proposes that the sun and moon are 50 kilometers in diameter and circle the Earth at a height of 5,500 kilometers, with stars rotating on the dome above. Stop laughing, I can hear you, it's serious, man. Come on, show some damn respect. To top this off, the UK model decides that we don't have gravity, and the disc itself is just accelerating suspiciously at 9.8 ms. For those of you who don't know, that's the exact strength of gravity to two significant figures. This one piece of information really got under my skin, because they're willing to use science, however, in the same vein they managed to twist it to their will. In the words of Jeff Winger, teach me this power, so I can abuse it. As Brazil continues, these ideas, whilst scoffed at by most rational physicists and regular people, the speed at which they are spreading is very alarming and gaining traction outside the US. Jan Slager, a physicist from the University of Raditz Kralove in the Czech Republic, I apologize for saying your name using text to speech, I really couldn't pronounce it, who wrote a book for teachers confronting flat earthers with physics had this to say. While they may not be as many in Europe, they are as loud as their colleagues in the US. His book is rather important, as the poll data shows that 7% of Brazilians, not the author, the people, believe that the Earth is flat. For perspective, that's 11 million people. Which is ever so slightly terrifying. The data, according to Brazil, the person, not the country, has been attributed to the resurgence of evangelical church and the signs of religious fundamentalism which is spreading in the Middle East, for example, like wildfire. Brazil finds that in 2017, the website Jean-Afrique reported that geology student in Tunisia was intending to submit a PhD defending her work on a flat earth model. That's mental! That a PhD student for geology has managed to fall into the belief which is so clearly flawed. As Brazil explains, 
it would be so easy to dismiss these flat earthers as simply just being misguided due to the lack of education. But to do that would be wrong, and we're being scientific adults. We're not going to do that. And I will dismiss them for being annoying and believing that we live in a snow globe, respectively. Landrum comes back to explain to us why these people believe this theory. It's not really an education thing. It really is about disturbing authorities and institutions. Seems to be based on both a conspiracy mentality and a deeply held belief that looks a lot like religiosity, but isn't necessarily specifically tied to a religion. Landrum believes that the theory is linked to scientific denial and susceptibility to believing social media. Facebook is the devil will return. She believes that the conspiracy mentality leads to losing the ability to judge when to trust and when to be skeptical. For example, you should trust the phrase, the UK is a place ran by the Conservative Party. That's a true statement, unfortunately. But you should be skeptical of the phrase, it was a work meeting, not a party during lockdown. The lack of trust in authority have led them to believing that all the scientific bodies and governments are just in a massive pact to ensure that the flat earth is never revealed. We return to McIntyre, who comments. They view the world through this really dark filter where they assume that all authorities and institutions and corporations are just there to exploit you. At the convention he attended, he found that each person he spoke to had a different interpretation and believed varying different things. For example, some believe that the government controlled the weather and chemtrails, which I didn't know were a thing, from planes consisted of biological agents. Which is slightly insane. McIntyre continues. The only one I found that they all believed was that we hadn't gone to the moon. If you offer them back evidence, like the view of the Earth from the moon, they say it's fake. At this point we can all see that they're more invested in telling a good story than they are with giving us workable theories to break down. We then introduce the English philosopher, Nick Effingham. Just for the record, it's a fun last name. He met up with flat earthers in London, which means it's spreading. He goes on to explain that the confidence in authority, more than lack thereof, shapes their belief to a frightening extent. When we try and prove something like the earth being round, because it's a belief that we are so sure of, we underplay the justified role of authority in that. This works both ways, believe it or not. We are so comfortable with our belief that the earth is round, that a lot of us can't recall the scientific information to back it up. The difference between those of us who believe the Earth is a sphere and those who believe it's not is the need for proof. We have proof, we went looking for proof, proof was there, and our hypothesis was proved. Whereas flat earthers believe that proof is not needed if you can argue well enough. This was fueled heavily by YouTube, surprisingly enough, as Landrum explains. Almost everybody that we spoke to said that either they were directly exposed to flat Earth on YouTube, or they were exposed to it via a family member who was exposed to it on YouTube. The Flat Earth videos online often show numerous points in succession without time for processing of logic. This gives it the illusion of fluency, as Landrum explains. This illusion is the key to their arguments, and without it, their arguments just fall apart. The key to the video's success came down to the YouTube algorithms, of all things. The algorithms facilitate the normalizing of conspiracies and the feeling of a consensus within your community. Flat Earth is just another example of that. The algorithm has since been changed to reduce the recommendation of these forms of videos, but the fact that it was a thing they had to do was just beyond a joke. YouTube almost definitely profited from the spreading of misinformation during this time, and it was something they were doing up until 2019. This is realistically exactly what we should expect from corporations at this point and YouTube will always act against creators if it affects their profit margins just like they acted with Atman recently removing an honest rather entertaining creator from a platform and protecting a homophobic doxing wanker who isn't getting names so he can't have airtime. In 2018 McIntyre's work led him to the Flat Earth conference we've heard so much about. He spent time here discussing the so-called evidence they have of the Earth being flat and the conspiracy they believe is hiding the so-called truth from the public. This gets more and more depressing every time I read it. He explains, I thought that if I could understand how to push back against flat earthers, I could use the same techniques to fight back against climate change deniers and anti-vaxxers. Some of the flat earthers know enough physics to throw around the vocabulary, but they don't actually understand enough physics to be compelled by the truth. 
Without using images, we can play the Flat Earthers at their own game by talking physics and debunking their theories using trigonometry and basic physics. Brazil starts in a good place. Again, the author, not the person. We shall let her explain in her own words. A Foucault's pendulum, the device named after the French physicist Léon Foucault, who in 1851 famously hung a heavy 28 kilograms brass bob from a 67 meters chain in the Pantheon in Paris. Such a pendulum, which can swing in any plane, changes direction during the course of a day, yielding direct evidence of the Earth's rotation. Another phenomenon we can use to disprove the flat air theory is Coriolis force. The Coriolis force acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of a spinning mass. This leads to cyclone swirling cock clockwise. Hey. This leads to cyclones spinning clockwise in the southern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. For the direction of winds, it also impacts ocean currents. Long range military snipers even have to make allowances for deflections caused by the Colorus effect. Returning to the Flat Earth Conference, McIntyre was often shown a picture of Chicago, taken from Lake Michigan, where the skyscrapers were clearly visible. To them, this is proof that their theory is true, due to Chicago being 100 kilometers away. McIntyre gave an explanation for this belief. Given the curvature of the Earth, you shouldn't, in principle, be able to see the skyline of the city from that far out. The reason the buildings are visible lies in the fact that the air directly above the water's surface is colder than the air higher up. This inverse gradient means that light rays refract towards the colder, denser air allowing an image of the reflected skyline formed on the water below the horizon to appear almost hovering above the horizon. This can be proven by taking a photo just a little bit further away, and the mirage of sorts will just disappear. However, McIntyre found that this explanation wouldn't exactly satisfy the flat earthers. They seem to have a very low standard of evidence for what they want to believe, but an impossibly high standard of evidence for what they don't want to believe. One of their most treasured pieces of equipment is the Nikon P900 camera, which is an 83 times optical zoom which flat earthers place what Brazil describes as an almost religious faith into. This camera is able to capture details which aren't visible to the naked eye, which they hope to show that objects in the distance won't disappear over the horizon, but stay in view and our eyes aren't strong enough to see them. We're shit. We should all just cry. McIntyre describes his frustrations with this in a 2019 paper released by the American Journal of Physics. Remember that? The AGP. Huh, it's almost as if everything linked in. Because we're living in the Matrix. I'm kidding. I could only wish we were living in the Matrix. He challenges other physicists to come up with easy and straightforward ways to refute so-called evidence for flat earth, which could be understood by anyone. Bruce Sherwood, the legend! rose to this challenge and commented, Just citing the scientific facts is not going to convince anybody. Using the flat earth as beliefs in the naked eye observations against them, he created a flat earth model of the earth to show how it doesn't make sense. We saw it earlier. It's back on screen now. It's all connected. It's a multiverse. He comments on the model he created. Walking round in it, there were many things that show tremendous discrepancies, a major problem is the size and brightness of the sun. In the flat earth model, the size of the sun varies constantly. It, this returns, of course, to the differing theories we previously spoke about. McIntyre saw the model and had this to say. What Sherwood has created is something that's much harder for flat earth proponents to laugh off, because it takes their own views seriously, and traces out the consequences. I think that on this basis, other physicists can go out and help to push. From McIntyre's perspective, According to Brazil, flat earth conspiracy theories are a danger and must be confronted as he continues. Maybe 10 or 20 years ago, I would have said, just laugh at them, how much traction are they going to get? I no longer feel that way. Brazil claims that if these ideas are not challenged, McIntyre fears that the flat earthers will run for the school boards in order to push their ideas into the education system. The sort of reasoning that they use is infectious and if you don't push back against them, it just gets worse and they're able to recruit new members. Effingham, on the other hand, who interacts with Flat Earthers on Facebook, the devil's website, where dreams go to die, the metaverse is a joke. Fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. He had a differing belief. He believes that physics could be the answer to combating the theory. He says this. I'm not saying that the perfect formula doesn't have some kind of physics argument in it, 
but just turning on a YouTube video of physics lectures is not going to do it. Effingham often shows flat earthers YouTube videos arguing against them. By the way, if you're a flat earther sent by Effingham, hi, hello, send Effingham my love. Effingham also tries to point out the inconsistencies as he explains. Every position they took required a different view of the conspiracy, and required the conspiracy to be bigger or smaller, and it was impossible to get a consistent conspiracy going that explained everything. Brazil then speaks of McIntyre's example where he asks flat earthers why the planes fly over the Antarctic when travelling from Chile to New Zealand don't need to refuel, which they'd have to, if the flat earthers' map are to be believed. The response he got was just... brilliant. Apparently, refueling planes could just be a giant hoax and the trip can be done on one tank of fuel and the hoax is there just to hide the flat earth, which of course is... fucking mental! <laughs> Landrum agrees with McIntyre on the topic of trust rather than physical understanding, stating We really should figure out as a scientific community and as a society as a whole how we can start building back trust in our organizations and institutions. She believes this needs to be done face to face rather than using Effingham's method of internet therapy as she continues. I don't mean go yell at them on Twitter. That's not engaging. By the way, if anyone can guess who Landrum's voice is, I will give you a tenner. That's a lie, I don't have any money. She also believes that patronisation isn't the way to go forward. We must take them seriously. As hard as that is. McIntyre also argues this. It does work to push back against science deniers. He then references current head of NASA, Jim Brindenstein, who Donald Trump, of all people, appointed in 2018. Brindenstein is a known disputer of climate change. But once he became head of NASA, within a matter of two months or so, he changed his mind on climate change, and publicly said, I was wrong. This shows the impact that science can actually have if presented right, and in a trusting environment. The piece ends with what can only be described as the perfect ending, with a quote from McIntyre which I believe just perfectly sums it up. I think that physicists need to be more involved. There's really no excuse for us to just sit back and laugh at them. Because while we're laughing, they are recruiting people to believe these crazy things. I have learnt quite a lot from this article, and I hope you have too. The thinking behind Flat Earth is, is quite shocking to me, because I didn't believe that they were so stubborn. I believe that they had a certain amount of confirmation bias, as everyone does, but it's surprising to see how stubborn they actually are. Hopefully, we all learnt something, and hopefully, if you know someone with a Flat Earth mentality, we can show them this article and this video, and we can deconvert them. And now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a little lie down. Ah! Why? We have a backup experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. OK, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there? Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his. Um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your lift up your light uh, way above your head. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, so that's that, gamers. That's the full video. It only took me, what? Five months to get it out? Whoops. Sorry about that. A lot's been going on recently, and I just thought I'd cap out this video by explaining it. Madlib style. Because I do not have a script, it is 2am, and I am ready for my bed. Essentially, I had some university issues. Nothing too big, but it just means I have switched university now. So I am no longer at insert real university name here, I'm at insert other university name here. Because I'm not doxing myself. Because that's bad, and you shouldn't do that. 
Um, unless, you, you know, you want to send me your bank details. You know, it's always good. You know, don't do that. I don't want to get banned. Also, big thank you to everyone who's helped out on this video. Dogs, dogs, as always, for editing my scripts and keeping me sane during the very, very lengthy research period. This is the longest we've ever spent researching a video because we know flat earthers are gonna be mad. So we wanna go in there with the best defense possible. So feel free to try and pick it apart. There's obviously gonna be a bit you can pick apart. I am not a flat earth expert. I'm simply a guy on the internet. So feel free. Also, if you are writing your hateful mean comment, please, please do. It pleases the algorithm and pushes my video into people's recommended. So thanks for that. Also, big shout out to Bean and Anon. They helped me proofread all of the research and they also made sure that everything we were saying was correct and legally sound because I don't want to get in trouble for this video. Which also reminds me, thank you to my nondescript friend who's taking law at university. I'm not allowed to say her name. She told me I was not allowed, but she double-checked the script. She said everything is fancy, 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 and I'm not going to get into trouble. So, suck it, bitches. Also, big shout-out to Humble Bundle. You know, they've got some good bundles. In fact, hold on. I haven't advertised this in a while, and I'm going to get into trouble if I don't, so bear with me. Bear with me. Come on, Humble. I'm on my email. Okay, Google, reload. Don't care. Um, let's have a look at what Humble Bundle is offering us. Humble Bundle, Humble Bundle, Humble Bundle. Uh, what? Hello? Humble Bundle. Hey, yo, Humble Bundle, where you at? This is getting cool. This is really getting cool. Humble part. No? There we go. So yeah, so far, at time of recording, we have the Cloud Infrastructure and Operations Bundle for supporting code for America. If you're an IT manager, engineer, admin, or other professional looking for a reliable source on the cloud infrastructure and ops, add these O'Reilly eBooks to your library. Yeah. Uh, use code humblebundle.com forward slash question mark partner equals shadow square, please. I make money from this and I am poor. Also, feel free to download the Dungeons and Creatures and more. 3D Printables Pack. Give the castles, creatures, and battles in your party imagination a new dimension with these epic 3D printables featuring STL and PDF files. I know what they are. From Flat Dragon Games. And you can support whatever charity you want with that, or you can just support me. What else have we got? Oh, we can, you can do Total War games! Go download Total War Classic games from medieval Europe to feudal Japan to the shores of the 18th century of America. We should never have left them. Conquer the globe in this history-spanning bundle of acclaimed Total War games, including Medieval 2, Shogun 2, Empire, and more. What else have we got? Um... There's another Shogun game there. There's Total War Empire Infinite Edition. Total War Medieval 2 Definitive Edition. Yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff, yeah. Feel free to check that out again. And let's look for one more. So then I have hit my quota and I do not get banned from the partner program. Finally, we have the Ultimate Unity Unreal Engine Online Course. Want to create a game using Unity or Unreal Engine? I know I do. I love creating games like this one. Maybe not this one. This one is deplorable. Looking to level up your skills for a career in development? I know I am. That's why I've shot my wife. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell. 
Get the complete education with this online course bundle from Mammoth Interactive. As a partner, again, I make money, and this charity is supporting Convenient House. Yeah. Ooh. That's good. Again, go to thehumblebundle.com forward slash question mark partner equals shadow square. And, you know, that slider, move it my way. Because every purchase you use with my code helps me keep making videos and helps me pay my staff. I don't have staff. I have, like, three friends that help me. But it helps me pay my wife's alimony. But, yeah, that's that. This is the longest conclusion I've ever done to a video because I wanted to do a sponsored section, which is why I leave it till the end of the videos. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe or click on this card here on the middle of the screen to watch another video. I don't know what video it is. I'm recording this before I put it into the video editor. So, you know, just watch it. Could be good. You know, I go to my humble bundle. Go to my humble bundle, please!